headphones? Yeah, we're just going to put on some headphones to decrease the echo. All good. Sounds great. We're live and uh, we're kicked off. Uh, welcome everybody who's uh, watching and with us. And uh, as uh, many of you know and some of you don't, my name is Eric Edmeads and I've got Dr. Lauren Cordain here with us today. And uh, I thought I'd offer a little preamble as to why I would want to do this interview and why I'm excited about it. And that is that um, certainly many of you who have uh, seen me speak on the topic before or um, have done any of our programs will know that I'm a, a big fan of um, I'm a big fan of the concept of returning to the past and taking a look at evolutionary design and, 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 and you know, getting some clues about health and longevity that way. And when I first started on this journey as a young man, um, I really felt largely alone. I, you know, I was, it was the early, it was 1991, 92, and I, I kind of started, you know, thinking a lot about this stuff. And then one day I walked into a bookstore and I saw this book, The Paleo Diet, and I, I opened it up and I was like, it, it was like this unbelievable uh, wash over of validation that I wasn't a nut bar, you know, that, that maybe there was, maybe we were on the right track in some way. And, and also, a tremendous um, refinements of some of my ideas and thoughts on the topic. And, and so I've been, I've been following uh, uh, Dr. Cordain for a long, long time, and I've, I've been a big fan. And so I'm really glad to uh, have him here to, to, uh, to chat with today. And uh, so, uh, Dr. Cordain, thanks very much for joining us. Well, Eric, it's uh, my pleasure. I'm, I'm glad that uh, you and I could uh, get together. Absolutely. And where, where are you right now, just so we can locate everybody geographically? I'm in Fort Collins, Colorado. So Fort we're Collins, about, Colorado. Well, we're about yeah. 60 miles north of uh, Denver. Gotcha, gotcha. I always think uh, Alexander Graham Bell would be pretty impressed with what we can pull off these days. I'm, I'm sitting here in uh, uh, Amsterdam Central having had a slightly late plane and a slightly late train and literally walked into my room in time to, to get us started here. <laughs> so Yeah, that's uh, it, it's really amazing what we can do electronically and, and how we just kind of go all over the world. Uh, so yeah. uh, again, it's my pleasure to be able to speak to you and your group. Sounds great. So let, let me give you a little, I, I know we chatted a little bit on email and I, I by the way, thank you so much for sending that piece through on the Floresbad skull. Um, you know, uh, for background for, for those of you who are, I, you know don't know what I'm talking about, um, my, uh, my dad's grandfather was a guy named uh, T.F. Dreyer, and he discovered the Florespad skull, which some people call Homo hemlii and others call Homo sapiens archaic. And it represents a really, you know, to me, uh, a real inspiration. I, as, a, as a young, as a young great-grandson, I, I, I really um, was caught up in the imagination of what it must have been like to live back then. And that's long before I was thinking about health or any of that kind of stuff. Just I, I just had that fascination in general terms. And, and so years later when I started, um, you know, I had this bizarre realization that, you know, every species on Earth appears to have a diet except people. And if we ever want to, you know, it's like if we ever want to figure out what's going on with a captive animal, all we have to do is go look at the way it, it lived in nature and if we can duplicate that, then all of a sudden it's not getting sick in the zoo so much. And and it, it hit me, well, wait a minute, we should be able to do that for people. And then I started thinking about my grandfather and his work, and and then, bam, the paleo diet comes along. So so I'm uh, I'm, I'm really uh, uh, I'm really into this stuff. It's been over a 20-year journey for me. And so I've, I've got to, I and a lot of my clients have some really neat questions for your uh, point of view on a couple of things. And I, you know where I'd love to start if it's okay with you, and I, I sort of know a little bit of the story, but for everybody else, you know, I know what it was like for me to stumble onto this realization, and, and it, it was really simple. I was reading an article, you know, about elephants in circuses and zoos, and 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 they, you know, how they only lived six or seven or ten years, and 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 then one day when they, you know, this is of course a hundred years ago, and and then one day they realized that elephants in the zoo were living like seventy years. And, and all the zoo and circus owners became deeply concerned about the elephants or their balance sheets and figured, hey, how could we get 70 years out of our elephants? And of course, what did they do? Looked at the way the wild elephants were living, looked at the way the captive elephants were living, made some changes. And the thing that really bothered me about that article was that it kept referring to the elephant's wild diet. And to me, that was a grammatical you know, screw up. There's no such thing as the elephant's wild diet. There's the elephant's diet. <laughs> And that's what got me to this, holy cow, there's a human diet. And uh, so I'd love to know, how did you, you know, did you slip in the shower, bang your head, wake up one day and come up with this? Or, you know, we were, what, what was your story? Oh, I kind of like you, I had one of those aha moments. And uh, I've always been interested in health and fitness. And um, 
I was a track athlete in college, and uh, I worked as a lifeguard on a major beach in uh, at Lake Tahoe. So I've always had an interest in this, and uh, I ended up getting a, a PhD in exercise physiology in 1981 from the University of Utah, and so I promptly got a job at uh, Colorado State University as a professor there. And part of uh, being a professor at a Division I research institute is to have uh, a research focus. And so um, my focus I'm not sure what happened there. I think our uh, Hangout link kind of crashed for a second. Um, are you still with us? Okay, guys, hold on, hang on. We're going to sort out whatever technically happened here. <laughs> for all my talk of how impressed Alexander Graham Bell would be, I'm often <laughs> curious as to whether he'd be more impressed or more disappointed. Uh, but I think we'll get Lauren back here in a minute, so bear with me a second. Okay, let's now, now let's take a now look at the webinar. Through. 